Nephrotic syndrome is not a disease by itself, but is an important feature of several kidney diseases. And the main characteristic of this nephrotic syndrome is marked proteinuria, which is more than 2.5 grams per day, hypoalbuminemia, general edema, and hyperlipidemia. The normal kidney has about 1 to 2 million nephrons. And the glomerular structure has the fenestrated endothelium, glomerular basement membrane, and the podocytes. And there are two types of barriers in this nephron, which is the size barrier and the negative charge barrier. Usually, the glomerulus only lets small molecules such as sodium and water to pass during, but does not allow bigger molecules or negatively charged molecules such as the proteins to pass through the membrane. In nephrotic syndrome, the glomerulus is damaged and becomes more permeable, letting plasma proteins to leak into urine. The leakage causes proteinuria, which is greater than 3.5 grams per day. Nephrotic syndrome can be classified into two types. That is the primary nephrotic syndrome, being a disease specific to the kidneys, or can be secondary, being a random manifestation of a systemic general illness. The causes of primary nephrotic syndrome include minimal change nephropathy, which is the most common cause in children, focal glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, and hereditary nephropathies. Then in secondary nephrotic syndrome, the causes include diabetes mellitus, which is diabetic nephropathy, lupus erythematosus, viral infections such as hepatitis B, C, and human immunodeficiency virus, amyloidosis and paraproteinemia, together with preeclampsia, and allo antibodies from enzyme replacement therapy. The plasma protein, which is bigger than 70 nanometers, is restricted from passing through the glomerulus basement membrane by a charge size barrier. The charge selective barrier, such as heparin sulfate in the glomerular basement membrane, restricts the passage of small polyanion plasma proteins, most commonly the albumin. And albumin is the main protein lost because it is the most common and it's the smallest of the plasma proteins. When there is a loss of charge selectivity, like neutralizing charges in minimal change chromatin nephropathy, the albumin can leak out into urine, causing hypoalbuminemia and albuminuria. Loss of albumin to urine causes hypoalbuminemia, lowering plasmacortic pressure making the extracellular fluid to start seeping out of the intravascular compartment causing hypovolemia. And this hypovolemia causes lowered kidney perfusion, stimulating activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Then this RAS system enhances distal renal tubular sodium reabsorption. But since the fluid cannot be held in the vascular compartment, it leaks again out of the tissues, leading to development of pitting edema. In severe cases, hypoalbuminemia can cause hypovolemia with pre renal failure. And this edema in nephrotic syndrome will start around the eyes as periopto-edema because the skin around the eyes is loosely attached to the bones and muscles, then spreads to the body, causing general edema, which is known as anasaka. Then the loss of small cell proteins such as immunoglobulins to urine causes low levels of IgG levels and loss of Bacta B, causing the alternate pathway of complement activation to be compromised, which therefore leads to low immunity and susceptibility to infections. Loss of thyroxine binding proteins, 25-OH cholecalciferol binding globulin and transferrin leads to impaired ion transportation, which causes ion deviation anemia in these patients with nephrotic syndrome. And loss of antithrombin 3, which is an anticoagulant urine, but fibrinogen is not lost because it's a big molecule, so you have high levels of fibrinogen in blood. And these high levels will cause hypercoagulation of blood, therefore making these patients with nephrotic syndrome to be at risk of thrombosis because of hyperviscosity blood. There is also an increase in hepatic synthesis of cholesterol, triglycerides, and lipoproteins which causes hyperlipidemia, and an increased urinary loss of high-density lipoproteins causes lipuria. The differential diagnosis when you come across this patient with features of nephrotic syndrome will be 
acute glomerulonephritis, acute renal failure, chronic renal failure, quashia co, allergic reactions, congestive cardiac failure, liver disease with hypoalbuminemia, and protein losing enteropathies. The investigations you conduct during your diagnosis will include urinalysis, which will indicate hematuria and proteinuria, complement C3 levels, and urine sediment examination. Urinary protein measurement, serum albumin, serologic studies for infections and immune abnormalities, together with renal ultrasonography and renal biopsy. Then the management will include dietary management, normal protein diet as per nutritional status of the patient. And high protein diet will increase protein synthesis, but will increase albumin excretion rather than plasma albumin levels. Low salt intake, if obese, due to steroids, control the calorie intake. The medication will include corticosteroids such as prednisone, immunomodulators such as cyclophosphamide and cyclosporin used to induce remission of nephrotic syndrome, diuretics such as fulosamide and spironolactone which is a potassium sparing diuretic is used to relieve the edema, and angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors such as captopril, enalapril and lisinopril plus angiotensin 2 receptor blockers such as losartan and valsartan can be used to reduce proteinuria. You'll have to manage complications such as hypertension by using short-term treatment with nifedipine and hydralazine, but you can also add a tenolol to aid of them. You prevent thrombosis by encouraging mobilization of the patient and psychological support. Then you manage the infections using prophylactic antibiotic penicillin B in patients with gross ascites, septicemia, or peritonitis. And you can add first-generation cephalosporins or clothlazine and flucloclazine together with third-generation cephalosporins. You manage hypovolemia using albumin infusion. Thank you and hope you have enjoyed our tutorial. Consider subscribing to our channel for future tutorials.